Welcome. Um, my name is Amy Stanton. I am the Director of Brand Engagement and Cause here at 4Moms. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today for the premiere of our final 4Moms Sleepversity episode this year, featuring Janetta and Hashim Lafond. Um, so for those of you who are new here, a little background on Sleepversity. So at Four Moms, we're honored to be a part of over a million new parents and their babies' earliest months with products like our Momoro Sleep Bassinet, the Momoro Swing, and many more. But with Sleepversity, we partnered with a group of amazing influencers and created something that dives deep into newborn sleep. We really want to help parents understand their baby's developments, learn more skills, and see other real parents in action to show just how diverse sleep is for every baby. I think we all know that no baby sleep journey is the same, but something we often hear from parents is that they feel guilty or that they're doing something wrong if they're not following this or that sleep method exactly. So that's why we created Sleepversity, to give parents a resource that shows the many different approaches to newborn sleep and to help them feel more supported, informed, and empowered. It's something they can turn to anytime they need someone to relate to. So with that, I am thrilled to introduce to you our host, Carolyn Harvey certified pediatric sleep expert and founder of Dream Baby Sleep and the quarterback of Team Sleepversity. Welcome, Carolyn. Hey, Amy. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I am thrilled to be here and thank you for moms for having me. I'm really honestly excited to be a part of this Sleepversity campaign and share more about the complexity of newborn sleep helping new parents truly enjoy those early months of their baby's lives. First, I wanted to welcome our next parents featured on Sleepversity, the amazing Janetta and Hashim Lafond. We are so excited to highlight their story as parents of six beautiful children. Hi guys. Thank you so much for having us and we're super excited to be here. Awesome. Hey, Hashem, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, remember, we have six kids, so I, got my, I have my eye on like three of them right now. I, I'll give them the look. <laughs> we understand. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much. I am really excited to get started. But first, let's go over just a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any sleep questions or questions about Janetta's family's journey and their sleep journey, please type them in the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. We'll be answering your questions live towards the end of the event. So make sure you ask your sleep or parenting related questions for Janetta and Hashem in the Q&A box, not the chat, okay? We also wanted to thank the amazing companies who contributed to our Parents Night In swag bag. So we want to thank Matrisense Skincare, Lila and Jack Teethers, Ella Alla, All Natural Bath Soak, and Hip Peas Snacks. So big shout out to them. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for those of you who did not receive a swag bag from those amazing brands, I have great news for you. You can enter to win not only the swag bag, but also a Mamaru sleep bassinet. You heard me. You can enter to win by clicking on the link in the chat. We're going to post that now in the chat, not in the Q&A. So please, please, please enter to win. Okay. All right. Not without further ado, we are pleased to present episode Five, our final episode of Sleepversity Season 1 with Janetta and Hashem Lafond. Today, we're sitting down with Janetta and Hashem Lafond, high school sweethearts and the creators behind House of Lafond. They have an incredible story about their journey to parenthood. Before having children, Janetta was diagnosed with endometriosis and was told she was unable to have children. Well, that proved to not be true. They are now parents to six children, ages eight years old to three months old. 
In today's episode, they're gonna share more about her C-section recovery, being she's had six. We'll chat about swaddling and her breastfeeding journey. Welcome Janetta and Hashem. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. We're, we're so excited to be here. We're excited to share our journey and talk about sleep. Hopefully this can be helpful to any other parents out there. I would love to start at the beginning. I understand your doctor told you that it was unlikely that you would ever be able to have a baby. Can you share more about that and your parenting journey? Absolutely, yes. So my senior year of high school, I was diagnosed with endometriosis and I had to have surgery. And after the surgery, they said um, there was a lot of damage and because of it, I will most likely not have children. Hashem and I got married and we were pregnant three years later with our first. And that actually ended up resulting in a miscarriage and we were devastated. And then we got pregnant a few months after that with our first, Anaya, which yes. means God answers. And then we kept going. <laughs> we have oh. another one named Zariah. So we got pregnant for the third time and it was an ectopic pregnancy. Um, that was also devastating because we went on a journey of, am I pregnant? Am I not going to be pregnant? What's going to happen with that? Um, but then later, a few months later, we got pregnant and we had Yasir, then Zaire, then Ad and I, and now we have Ad and I. Well, congratulations to you both. How did you manage recovery and balancing keeping your growing family active, happy, and healthy through back-to-back -back pregnancies? We've definitely had a lot of help. Um, our parents have flown in to help watch the children and support us in that way. Hashem has been an amazing help. I remember you telling me earlier that there is like one crop that you must have after a C-section in case your partner is super funny. Having people that are funny around is the worst after a C-section. So definitely have your pillow and a stomach band. It hurts to just bend over and pick up the baby, let alone laugh, so I can't imagine. Were all of your children the same when they were newborns? What were some of the differences regarding their sleep? Every child sleeps different. Nobody tells you that when you have multiple children either. Some of my children loved to be swaddled. Oh my goodness, I would swaddle them and they would go right to sleep. Yana is one of the children that she is like, no, I don't need this, get me out. I want my arms free, I want to chew on my fingers, set me free. But she's super clean, she loves to cuddle, she loves to be touched and, you know, as long as she can be close to you. And so I love putting her in the full mom sleep bassinet because it rocks her and, you know, she can keep moving, but then I can see her through the net and it's perfect. Yeah, that's so spot on. Whether you have multiple children or one, we see that what works for one baby may not work for another. I recommend swaddling with newborns, assuming your baby is not trying to roll. Swaddles are helpful to minimize that, that moral reflex, which is also known as the startle reflex. Your swaddle should not be weighted per the American Academy of Pediatrics updated guidelines from June of 2022. The baby's swaddle should be snug around their chest, but still allow for your hand to slide inside. You want it loose around the hips. Again, make sure you discontinue use of a swaddle when your baby shows signs of attempting to roll. Some babies love the swaddle, as Janetta said, and some don't. But keep in mind, what they don't like one week, they love the next. Let's switch gears and talk about breastfeeding. You breastfed all six of your babies, which is amazing. How has breastfeeding been in relation to your sleep? Breastfeeding has made sleeping a lot easier, in my opinion. For our family, it works amazing. I mean, Hashem sleeps through the night because I can breastfeed. I, you know, I might fall asleep a little bit, but as soon as, you know, you and I or any of the other children were done, I would take them back in their bassinet and go to sleep. And then Hashem would be able to wake up in the morning and fully breastfed and be able to be all the support that I needed throughout the day. And that 
works great for our family. So I would breastfeed and nurse, and I would literally get from the baby, go get back in the bed and sleep for the good two to three hours that the baby was not hungry. And it's been amazing for our journey because it allowed me to sleep. Yeah, that's so amazing. So, you know, I don't know if you experienced this, but I know when I was breastfeeding at night, initially I was like so inclined to be like, ooh, ah, uh, hi, baby, mommy loves you, all that happy stuff. But a pro tip, we wanna make sure that when we're feeding our baby at night, we want to really minimize those interactions during the feed. During the daytime, you can absolutely be talkative and playful, but at night, keep it all about business and resist the urge to chat with your baby after bedtime because this will really help minimize and or end day and night confusion. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Thank you, Janetta and Hashem, for sharing your triumph to parenthood and helping to normalize the challenges of newborn sleep. You guys should be teaching the next class. Having been through the newborn sleep phase six times, Thank you for taking the time to be here and for sharing such great advice on sleep and parenting. Yeah, if we can share our journey and inspire other people to become parents, then it's worth it. I'd like to remind everyone, you can continue to follow the LaFond family's journey on Instagram at Janetta LaFond and at Hashem LaFond. And don't forget to follow at 4moms underscore HQ on Instagram for more sleepversity updates and episode announcements. Sleep well. Oh my gosh, I'm dying, Janetta. Is that the first time that you guys have seen it? Yes, it's so cute. <laughs> you You're so it? big now. I know it's so wild. I'm so in love with you guys. I can't even stand it. Like your, your family story, your videos are so authentic and so heartwarming. It's just, honestly, it's just such a pleasure. So, um, I mean, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Thank you. So Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. So quick reminder that, um, you guys want to make sure, please, 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 Make sure you're entering um, the giveaway, right? Our Parents' Night In giveaway. You're going to get the swag bag and the Mama's Sleep Bassinet that just got reposted below. And then your second reminder is please go ahead and post your sleep questions or um, any sleep questions or family-related questions for Janetta and Hashem in the Q&A. Please, please, please use the Q&A because that's where we're going to go to after this fun round of trivia hosted by Amy. <laughs> yes, so excited. Um, we have four questions because we love the number four here. Um, and we're going to give everyone four opportunities to win a $50 credit to fourmoms.com. Um, so the way that it works is we will ask a, a question in the poll. Um, you go on and click your answer. We will randomly select someone from someone who answered correctly. And I will email you tomorrow with your code. So good luck to everyone. Um, we're gonna start with the first question here. How often does Carolyn recommend doing tummy time with your newborn baby? Twice a day for 20 minutes increments each, in between each feeding session and nap, three times a day, one minute for each week of your baby's age, or as much as he or she can tolerate. That's All right. One. We are going to good one, Amy. There are so many expecting. I went through the um, chat. There are so many expecting parents on this live right now. So I'm so excited for them to win one of these gift cards and the parents sign in swag bag. But this is a great question for our expecting parents. I would have never known this expecting. All right. We're going to give people just Five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one. The answer is three times a day, one minute for each week of your baby's age. How'd we do? Super important. Right. Everybody did great. 43% of the people got it right. Pretty so that's good. awesome. Excellent. From the first week you come home from the hospital, get into that tummy time. 
All right, question number two. Here we go. Which of the following is not one of the AAP's recommendations for safe sleep for a newborn? Place baby on a firm, flat sleeping surface. Place your newborn on her back to sleep. Don't use a weighted sleep sack. Don't use a hat or bed chair. So this is which one is not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. We are currently in Safe Sleep Month, right, Carolyn? We sure are. And safety is our tippy tippy top priority. We have epic, epic content on the Four Moms blog about safe sleep. So definitely check that out or DM us if you have any safe sleep questions. All right, we'll give it three more seconds. Three, two, one. All right. We very good. Bed sharing awesome. is a no. Excellent. All right. Moving awesome. On. And just real quick, because it's Safe Sleep Month, Amy, why yeah. not hit us with just a quick little safe sleep rundown? For the American Academy of Pediatrics, we want a room share, not bed share. We want to place baby down on her back to sleep always. We want to keep it firm, flat, and fitted. That's a firm sleeping surface, a flat sleeping surface, and using a fitted sheet only that comes with your bassinet or pack and play or your crib. So feel free to reach out with any safe sleep questions. Amazing. Thank you. I think that I could recite that in my sleep. I know you could. <laughs> All right. The next question, question number three, this is kind of a, a tricky one. So pay attention. I'm sure Janetta and Hashim will get this right. What yeah. is the name of their fourth born child? Adonai, Anaya, Yanai, Yasir, Zaire, or Zariah? Am I saying that right? Did I miss? I must, I must have missed up. One. Janetta, did we get them all right? All right. Set all perfect. right. Amazing. All right. All right. Let's see. All right, we'll give everyone four more seconds. Four, three, two, one. How'd we do, guys? Ah, all right. Hello. It was, um, Janetta, would you like to reveal the winning? Zaire is child number four. Yes. Yes. All right. Final question, guys. Last chance. Here we go. What, fe what feature is not included in the mom or sleep bassinet? Five motions, five speeds, four white noise options, a newborn sleep course powered by Dream Baby Sleep, or a built-in monitor? All right. We'll give everyone a couple more seconds. Four, three, two, one. How'd we do? All right. Yes. I don't know if it was the wink, but yes, we do not have a built in monitor, but we do have a newborn sleep class powered by Dream Baby Sleep. And Carolyn um, is our teacher in that class. It's amazing. And we offer that for free when you buy the Mommers Sleep Bassinet on, on fourmoms.com. So definitely check that out as well. So thank you to everyone who participated. Um, we will pick some winners and I will email you tomorrow with your $50 credit to fourmoms.com. So I think it's time to move into some questions. Yeah. Yeah, let's hit some questions. So I did see somebody post in the chat that they had trouble with the poll, fear not. You can still enter to win our um, Parents' Night In swag bag plus a Mama Who Sleep Bassinet um, using the link that is in the chat. So we'll go ahead and post that again. So if you had any troubles with the poll, you can definitely go ahead and enter to win that awesome, awesome giveaway. So, okay, fantastic. Um, all right, so let's hit some questions, Janetta and Hashem. Are you ready? Ready. Yes. Yes, I ready. feel ready. And I have a first, the first question is for you two, any advice for mom having two under two? You can speak to this. <laughs> <laughs> pray, pray a lot. What's the advice? Oh my God. Um, I'm going to be honest. Two is really difficult. Two is extremely difficult. Um, three was a lot easier. 
I think it was a lot easier. But I hear that all the time. Why? Why is that? Because it's just the transition from one to many is at two. And then the third is just like, okay. I think when there's two, all they can do is fight each other and worry about what the other one is doing. They're two opposite children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's They're not like not, you get two of the same. Yeah, you try yeah. to treat the, the second one the same, but it's like, oh, I don't want that. No, I'm, I'm new. And there's there so and there's just the two of them. So either you have to do two of everything and oh I want that. I want no, I want that. That's mine. So it's constant fighting. When you add a third, then there's this whole other person that they have to think about. So if I only have two, one of you isn't getting it, which one? And they realize sometimes it's not them, sometimes it's someone else. So it work it mellows itself out. It it turns into an even thing rather than an odd opposing. No. Right. Situation. Now, our so child, the advice when you have two is hang in there and have a third. <laughs> no, well, no, not necessarily. But one of the things I want to mention is that our second daughter is an introvert. So when we had our third child. The first and the third would like pair off and she got to have time to herself. Mm -hmm. Our first one was a social butterfly. That's why she needed siblings. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm calling it and I'm officially stating the answer to surviving your second child is to add a third. <laughs> yeah. or, or a friend or a cousin. <laughs> or a cousin. Yeah. Because they're so different and you expect things to be the same and they're so not. So they're that's just really not the same. That's really what it is. They're not yeah. the same. Treat them different, completely different. Yeah. Right. yeah. And encourage the second one to have their own identity because you don't want them to just fall in line okay. with the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's great advice. So the next up from Betty, this is a great question for a family of six. I'm sure you probably get this a lot. How do you manage to spend time with each child? Um, simple things. It doesn't have to be spending time isn't always the most extravagant, dramatic thing in the world. Yeah. And so simple things like going grocery shopping. I'll take yeah. one kid with me, maybe two kids with me. You know, I usually take the baby just because it's easier for him to manage the whole house if I at least have the baby. Um, but I'll sometimes take my oldest or my middle or, you know, any one of the kids and just run to the grocery store and they can help me with the groceries. And then usually it's like a Starbucks run or. Yeah, you know, it's something fun. Yeah. You know, yeah, you throw a little something extra in there where they're yeah. like, I went to the store with mommy and I got to get yeah. something. But it doesn't have to be this crazy extravagant thing. And sometimes yeah. it's as simple as, dad taking one of the girls or two both of the girls to dance class and yeah. so it's like daddy daughter time and it's like we're going to dance class yeah i mean um well i don't know if you know this but we have like our own song like if anaya's with me we have anaya daddy time yeah but so like whenever we get alone we're like oh what what because i mean i think one of the one of the blessings of it is you start to cherish the the little small moments that you have with indiv the individual time yeah. Um, that, that that time spent becomes quality time because you instantly instantly realize that we don't have that much of this. So, yeah. um, so we have we we make sure to kind of turn off the radio or put on their favorite song or we have a dialogue. Um, they they really want to talk or sometimes they just want to stay in silence. They just want to cuddle and yeah. watch something. Yeah, I love that. Keep it simple is so important. As as a single mom who shares time with my daughter's father. Uh, you know, my time is lessened because she's with her dad. So uh, I can see, uh, I can relate so closely to, it's not the quantity, it's the quality right. in those small moments that are like the simplest moments that are the most powerful versus like a trip to Disney when they're like on overload and everybody's all crazy eyed. Those right, car rides. They love their day. Yeah. Yeah, those car rides are the best. That's when you hear like the craziest things. I love that. Keep it simple. Excellent. Okay, so next up, let's see. Elizabeth said, is it possible for a baby to sleep too much? And how would I know? Usually not. Babies are designed to self-regulate. Okay, so there are some standards, Elizabeth. We um, shared some really awesome content on the Four Moms blog about um, age-appropriate nap schedules as well as age-appropriate bedtimes. So you can definitely check out the fourmoms.com blog for that. 
So I don't know how old your baby is, Elizabeth, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. So let's say it's you have a six month old. So, um, you know, newborns are sleeping like crazy, right? They're sleeping so we can recover as, as, as moms, right? Um, so they're sleeping around the clock 16 to 18 hours. So let's just hypothetically say you have a six month old, you're looking at about three naps a day. Um, and that day sleep is anywhere from two to four hours in total. And then at night, we're looking at about 10 to 12 hours of night sleep. So, um, we do pro tip, this is for everybody, regardless of the age of your baby, you want to cap. I know nobody likes to hear this, right? Especially if you have multiple children, you want to cap any one nap at maximum two hours, okay? That's so that we can get in playtime, feeds, and protect our sleep pressure into the next sleep cycle. So if you have any questions more about um, a super, super sleepy baby, definitely check with your pediatrician. Um, okay, great. So did you ever have that problem, Janetta? Did you have a baby who was like just a power sleeper? No, but I do know that they sleep a lot when they're growing too, though. Yeah. So there's days when I'm like, wait, why have you been sleeping all day? And then I look back and I'm like, that fit you two days ago. I love that you said that. So um, that's a really great call out. When we're experiencing a growth spurt, we often see slightly longer naps <laughs> and a longer duration of night sleep. So absolutely, that's an indicator of that. Um, okay, next up, let's see, Drew said, um, Drew said compression on the chest still counts as swaddling. Is that true? Transition swaddle would be a no-go. So Drew, I'm not 100% sure on this question, but I can clarify a couple of things. So a swaddle is a great tool um, if your baby vibes it. Um, some of Janetta and Hashem's did. They have six. Some did not. Uh, so if your baby does not, that's totally okay. We do not, however, want to use any compression or weight um, on our sleep sacks or on our babies at any point. Um, so there are transition swaddles, sleep sacks, right? Um, that you can absolutely use. You don't have to swaddle. You can just use a sleep sack and they are awesome, awesome tools. Janetta, how many of your babies were like, yes, ma'am on the swaddle? Um, let's see. Do you remember? The I don't even that honestly remember. Out the most is Ad and I. She loved to be swaddled. She needed yeah. to be swaddled because she was so clingy. Yeah. But and I find comfort in it often, but some of them hate it. So I it's hate. hit or miss, hit or miss. I feel like you either have like a swaddle addict or you don't. Right. Yeah. 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 And Aya hated it. My oldest, she was like, get my arms out, set me free. Set me free. I'm, I'm born to be wild. Yes, yes, set me free. I love that. So, uh, you know, again, pro tip, as soon as your baby is showing signs of wanting to roll, not rolling, signs of wanting to roll, you do not want to continue swaddling. At that point, if you are using a swaddle, you would discontinue use of your swaddle at that point. So great question, Drew. Okay, let's see. Um, who is next? Adanma, do you put your older children or younger? Oh, this is for you, Janetta and Hashem. Do you put your older children or younger to children to bed first, or do they all have the same bedtime? I have an eight year old and I'm due soon. So, wondering what the best bedtime routine is. So, it depends. An eight year old usually can go to sleep by themselves. Yeah. Um, and I usually, when it's new, newborn, I can include them in bedtime routines because they don't do much. Yeah, <laughs> like, I love that. Yeah. So much that it makes the best thing about newborn sleeping so much is that it allows you time to spend with your older children. So don't take that for granted when they start staying awake a little bit longer and you're like, wait, what happened? Why are you crying? But like, so for story time, I'll usually hold the baby and have the baby or wear the baby and then do story time, go to bed. But as they start to get older, so like toddlers or like, so right now, Adonai is in the room with her older sisters. Adonai is two, Anaya is eight, and Zariah is six. 
And right now I put them all to bed together because it helps Ad and I realize, no, we're done playing. They're yes. not talking to me anymore. They're ignoring me. This is boring. I guess I'll go to sleep. Yeah. So you're, you're leveraging your eight-year-old to help set an example for your two-year-old toddler. And they're participating in kind of that um, night support, if you will, leading by example. That's awesome. I totally agree with you. I feel like zero to six months old, you can kind of bring the baby along for the ride with the older kids bedtime. But Mm -hmm. then like, it's kind of a hard stop at nine months old, like nine to 18 months old. It's kind of like, oof you've got to divide and conquer. So one parents with one of the babies. Yep. And then what I do when they're older, like that nine month old, maybe even a year and a half is I do put the older kids to bed first. For one, I can spend the time with the baby and rock the baby, nurse the baby, calm the baby down without distraction. Cause I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know about anybody else, but my older kids I love that. nursing, they pop up and they want to kiss her and hug mm-hmm. her. I'm telling she's calming down. She's going to sleep. We're not playing anymore. So you go to bed. I, so I basically shut the whole house down. Everybody else is yeah. in bed rooms, doors closed. It's quiet. Now the baby understands it's your time to be also quiet, calm down, go to sleep. And babies tend to stay up longer. They usually stay up till about 10 o'clock at night. I feel yeah. like, yeah. and that I'm not keeping my eight-year-old up until 10. She drives me crazy. Yeah, I feel you. That's great advice. And, you know, it's different for everybody. So go with what works for your family. But um, I I love that. I think that's great advice. I always recommend to put the older kids down first because it's one more huggy, one more water, one more snack, one more back rub. And the baby is like, you know, tolerant of that. Yeah, but it's distracting for them. So yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay, let's see. Jenny says, our six month old is not sleeping at night, rolling onto her tummy on crazy positions. Is a sleep sack appropriate? Is this is a sleep sack the right approach? Okay, so Jenny and everybody, once your baby is starting signs of rolling, that's when we nix the swaddle and we use the sleep sack. So you, my friend Jenny, are a thousand percent dialed in. Your six-month-old is experiencing a developmental leap, which is what's jamming up sleep, okay? Anytime we transition through a leap, physical, uh, mental, or emotional, it sleep tends to be impacted. So that's where everybody talks about sleep regression, sleep regression, sleep regression. I, I really actually don't... Um, I I lean away from the whole regression thing because it's a developmental leap that's impacting sleep versus the sleep regression. So you're super dialed in to be in the sleep sack. Your six month old is not not sleeping at night because of the sleep sack. So the first thing that we want to look at is, are we using age appropriate bedtime? Four Moms has an epic blog that I wrote um, age appropriate bedtime. That's clutch. Anybody who's having a sleep issue right now, the very first thing that we're going to look at is age appropriate bedtime. Don't panic when you look at my bedtime by age chart. Okay. It's airing on the side of early. That's because everybody is naughty and they don't listen well to me and they hedge it. So they're like, oh, she says, 6.30, 6.30, I could do 7, 7.15. She says 7.30, I could do 8, 8.30. So I am erring on the side of early. If you're working outside of the home, control what you can. But I am here to tell you, first and foremost, early bedtime, early bedtime, early bedtime is the number one tool in your toolbox. So Jenny, start with early bedtime, okay? Um, you know, don't you find that, Janetta, like, if the kids, any one of the kids is like off the rails, right? Having a meltdown, whatever the case may be, it's like, there's nothing solving that. Put them to bed. The quicker yeah. you, you just get them, get them, get them gone. One right? thing, we, and we also said, did you take a nap today? Yep. And it doesn't matter how old the child is. Like my eight-year-old, sometimes we should have an attitude and we'll be like, did you take a nap today? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't need a nap. But then we get in the car and she's knocked out. 
because too much for her overstimulated the day was way too exciting for her whether it was dance class and you know doing school work and we learned something new in school today like it's just too much and it's very stimulating I love that you said that so listen I'm a huge advocate of the nap um for everybody so oftentimes our children will refuse a nap but they really, really need it, even at six, seven, eight, nine years old, right? So when in doubt, sleep is your first line of defense. It's a mood regulator. Lack of sleep, the mood goes south, (laughs) right? Yeah. So, okay, great question. Next up, um, at what age Oh, this is for you, Janetta and Hashem. At what age did your oldest sleep through the night without waking for a bottle? Mm. Janetta breastfed. So did you also uh, bottle feed at times? No. So we just exclusively, yeah. always exclusively breastfed. Yeah, that's um, what I, thought. I I would use a bottle to wean from breastfeeding, but it was just to give them something else to comfort themselves not for nutrients or food or anything like that so if the bottle wasn't working I I got rid of it like if we were still too clingy to me then the bottle's not working so this isn't like this is what the this isn't what the bottle's for because yeah. my kids would already drink from a sippy cup or a regular cup at the time and so yeah. the bottle is more like just to transition from a boob to not yeah, it's like that feeding bottle or breast in the middle of the night, regardless of the method you're feeding. If it's no longer serving you and or the baby, that's when we want to consider night weaning. So right. you always want to speak to your pediatrician about this first. We have an amazing blog on night weaning. You can DM me at Dream Baby Sleep, wean, just the word W E A N, and I'll send you my eight step night weaning guide, bottle or breast. So when baby starts, waking if baby starts waking up more at night to feed you're like oh my god baby's super hungry granted this baby is over six months six months of age right littler growth spurt but waking up more at night to feed is what's known as reverse cycling and it's a key indicator that it's actually time to night wean night weaning doesn't mean go to zero night weaning means evaluate the nutritional need And we, over the age of six months old, we want to feed the need in the middle of the night and not the want, because otherwise we can potentially start teaching the baby to wake up at night for feedings and or snacks, which is where we see, I know I experienced it, Janetta, when I was breastfeeding, granted over six months of age, not when they're newborns, they're feeding around the clock. I fed on demand also, but you see, I, I hear it all the time. My ba- my my nine month old is feeding four or five, six times a night. Yeah, that's just, just to cuddle. It's just because they want the the comfort that you're there. Human pacifier. Yep, it, that's really all it is. And yep. so when I noticed that I didn't have to nurse, like if there'd be a night where I'd be like, oh, you didn't wake up. First of all, it's time for you to start to get out of my room. Yep. Because oh, you slept through the night. And it's usually around one for, for my children. It's usually around one a little yeah. after their first birthday. And if I was like, oh, shoot, I slept through the night. Okay. Tonight, you know, maybe we can do a couple hours in your own room, your sister's room, wh- wherever your yeah. space is that I made for you so that we can get used to you not being up under me. That is such great advice. It's not a coincidence, my friends, when those babies sleep through the night, the first time you're like, oh my God, what just happened? Did you, did you hear the baby? I didn't hear the baby. Did you, you're shocked and you think it was a fluke. It's not a fluke. That is your baby raising the white flag saying, guess what? Help is here. I can do this on my own. Follow your baby's lead and encourage that behavior. And you want to avoid knee-jerk feeding at that point because they don't accidentally sleep through the night. It's a key indicator that they're 1,000% ready. So that's great advice, Janetta. Okay, let's see. Who is next? Lisa, um, at what point should we drop the mattress in the crib? So you want to follow your um, your crib's manufacturer's guidelines. So um, the, the height of your crib, you want to continue to drop that down based on your baby's skill level, right? So once baby is able to sit up, 
drop it down. You want to drop it down before that. Once baby is able to get on their knees, drop it down. I think there's three or four settings now. Um, and then again, drop it all the way down. So when in doubt, go low, right? Lower the better. You're better off with lower than higher. Okay, but check with your manufacturer on your crib. It'll, it'll give you that advice. Great question. Okay, let's see. Next up, April, do boys breastfeed more frequently than girls? Well, I can answer this for you. Um, that is a myth. However, I'm going to turn it over to the pro. Janetta, did you personally experience a difference in breastfeeding based on, based on gender? I don't think so. No. They they say that boys probably eat more because they're bigger. Yeah. But I don't, you know what? I don't think they eat more. I think your breast milk creates a more caloric milk so that they are fuller. Yeah, so I totally agree. If they you. feed more or longer, you might be hungrier than you were with a daughter. But yeah, I think your breast milk is um has a higher calorie count because the boys tend to need more calories than girls yeah but not more or longer yeah that's a great point yeah there's What's there's no though? sons are clingy they yeah look out for that I only have a daughter so I can't really speak to it but she is clingy I'll tell you that right now um that's a great question April uh you also asked that uh your son is showing hunger cues 60 to 90 minutes after nursing um based on your baby's age if that's a newborn that, that's spot on. I fed on demand uh, for the first six months. So if you have any questions about intake for your baby, definitely just double check with your pediatrician. Right. Um, as long as your baby's gaining a healthy weight, according to your pediatrician, I'm, I, I breastfed and used a pacifier because my oldest, I didn't know that they also pacify. Mm -hmm. And I was a human pacifier and it hurt Me too. very bad. So I introduced a pacifier and it didn't cause any confusion for me or anything like that, but that's not the same for everybody. So be careful, but yeah. I would do a pass. If your baby still needs to that sucking sensation filled, I would introduce a pacifier. Me too. I hundred percent would. So this is the thing. Jeanette is hundred percent right. Check your wet diapers as long as that your baby is producing the age appropriate amount of wet diapers and that your baby is growing on a curve. Don't worry about what your percentile is. I had a baby that wasn't even on the percentile scale. So we want to see a curve. Okay. So don't, it's the percentile scale is zero to a hundred for a reason. If you're somewhere in there, you're right where you should be. We want to see growth on a curve. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Christina. Does light make a difference? I've heard to start off life. <laughs> well, babies have no light in the womb. So this is a great question. Yes. So light makes a difference as it relates to sleep. So room darken, room darken, room darken, blackout, 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 your baby's room. I cannot say it enough. I lived with black lawn garbage bags with painter's tape taped around my windows, I'm going to go with a solid two and a half years. I think my neighbors thought that I was a total Lulu bird, which is fine, but that light sends a signal to the brain that it's time to be awake. It's science. Okay. So black out that room. It's not as necessary when they're newborns, but you're going to need it pretty quick. So out of the shoot, you might as well go with that room darkening. There's a lot of great, really cost-effective solutions um, out there. Obviously, if you're hanging black long garbage bags like I did, um, make sure they're not hanging over your baby's crib, bassinet, or pack and play. So safety first. But yes, light definitely, definitely makes a difference. Okay, so Amy has given us the two question warning, Janetta and Hashem. We have two questions left. This is where the pressure gets to me because there's a lot more than two questions. So we're gonna make it count. Can you feel the pressure? Okay, so I'm gonna give this one to you, uh, Janetta and Hashem. I feel like this is super, super relevant for you guys because you've done it six times. What do you recommend for first time moms and dads? First well, time out of the shoot, what do you wish you knew that you know now that you didn't know then? 
Okay, in all honesty, and this is not because you guys, I'm with you guys, but when I say the four moms, Mama Roo, and the sleep bassinet are lifesavers, yeah. like the the um the Mama Roo was one of the first things on my registry. Me too. And I didn't even know I needed it until I went to a friend's house and put Anaya in it. And I was like, okay, you have your baby. I need one. But I survived with Anaya without one. But as yeah. soon as her daughter outgrew it, I took it for Zariah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I was yeah. like, you're done. I'm taking it. It's mine. If you need it back, we'll figure it out. But for now, that's mine. I need this. It is. It was my favorite thing because they still feel like they're being cuddled and rocked mm-hmm. and held. But, you know, you kind of aren't doing that and they can still see you. So there's so much connection that can still happen without you feeling like I'm holding my baby 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that mattered so much. So that's yeah. Me. I love that. Hashem, anything on your side? Any m- must have, must know, not even have, no. Like what do Wait, you- I know. I cried when I got, so we moved to California and I left my mama room. And yeah. someone got it from me off my registry and I cried. Yeah, I can totally feel that. So all joking aside, long yeah. before I even knew four moms, I kid you not, I have video of it. My daughter's nickname was Rue, R-O-O, because she spent so much time <laughs> in that Mama Roo swing. Yeah. I'm telling you, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'll be honest with you. I gift the mamaroos. People are going to think this is planned. It's not. We did not plan this. I swear on my life. Um, I gift the mamaroos sleep bassinet to every single one of my expecting friends and family members because it gives you that just that little bit of edge. Like you just need a a little bit extra, you know, so good one. I have something. I mean, I think... um... I think one of the things Janetta did, did very well, one of the very, very many things, <laughs> is that she was completely honest, um, honest and, and transparent. And she tried to find the words to explain what she, like to how she felt or what she needed. Um, I mean, I, I didn't know what postpartum was. I didn't know, like, so I learned a lot just from her expressing how she feels to me. And me, like, and I would ask like, hey, is there anything you need me to do? Or is this open-ended? Do you want me to think of something? Um, um, and so it, it 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 made a great and like a great environment in our home for us to really support each other. Um, she would tell me what she whatever she needs, and I would try my best to support whatever she would do. One of the fast, most fascinating things I, I saw I learned when I when our, our first child is that um, the child looked for the breast, look for look to nurse, look to nurse. Immediately when they came out, I was like, oh my God, Janetta, you're powerful. Like, this, what can I do to support this? So you can, yeah. you can, you can keep, keep doing this. Um, yeah. How do I help this? How do I help this? Ask yeah, questions, be, right? Yeah. Ask questions. Be, be honest, be transparent. Um, seek help whenever you need it. Uh, yeah. Because teach us how, how to help. Yeah. Teach us how to help. I love that, Hashem. That's such a, that's, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. We've got one last question and I saw it from uh, Brianna because it is October and it is, I forget the name of it, but I'm pretty sure it's baby safety month somewhere in there. Um, So with that said, she said, wait, did you say no weighted anything, including sleep sacks? That is correct. Per the American Academy of Pediatrics, which Dream Baby Sleep follows very, very closely. They made an update in June of 2022, this year, first update in seven years, and they formally came out. Their position, which I am closely aligned with, is absolutely nothing weighted, okay? So any of the weighted sleep products that are on the market per the American Academy of Pediatrics, that is a no. So we will end on that safe sleep note, which I love, Amy. Guys, I love this whole Q&A session. I can't stand it. I love them so much. I want to move in. Can they like DM me? (laughs) I feel like 
feel so bad. I want to go. I want to answer everybody's questions. I, I know. Bad. I know. Don't you feel bad? I do too. There's if so can, many. If uh, they want to DM me, I'm open. Yep. I love that, Janetta. So give a shout out to your Instagram handle. We'll add it at the end, but go ahead and shout it out right now. Uh, yeah. Our names on every platform, Janetta Lafon, Hashem Lafon. And yeah. we have a fun TikTok, a House of LaFond. <laughs> I love House of LaFond on TikTok. <laughs> so they have so graciously offered. You can DM them. You can DM me at Dream Baby Sleep. We have epic amounts of free resources. Please, please, please. Also, if we didn't get your question, visit fourmoms.com blog. So I promise you, your question can be answered there. Yep. Listen, yeah. Yeah. Whenever you guys want to do do this again. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to thank Janetta and Hashim and their family for being a part of this. And obviously Carolyn has been amazing over all the sleepversities. Um, like they said, you have your questions. Um, they're so graciously going to answer them. If we didn't get to them, so sorry. We could be here all night, all night. Um, but I just want to thank everyone else um, that joined us for taking time out of their, their evening to be with us and to, to watch the Sleepversity episode. Um, if you tuned in late um, or you got held up with something else, you can definitely catch the replay um, of this episode on 4Moms YouTube channel. So we'll be posting that. Um, tomorrow. And again, thank you everyone for being a part of Sleepversity. We really appreciate it. Um, any final last thoughts? Such a pleasure. Love you guys, Janetta and Hashem. What a beautiful family. What a beautiful yeah. journey to parenthood that you have. Thank you so much. Love this was too. so thank fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So fun. We had a great time. Yeah. So, so did we, we all learned a lot. And as Carolyn always says, sleep well. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great night.